Corn tortillas can be one of the most frustrating things you buy at the grocery store. They are great if you buy them the same day for Taco Tuesday, but after a day or two, they always seem to get dry, crumbly, and falling apart. Then, not to mention, it seems like they only come in packs of 30, 50, or even 100. So it's not like you have three or four left over, but instead you've got 20 dry and crumbly tortillas that a lot of times end up getting wasted. Despite the shortcomings, I want to talk about why corn tortillas are actually one of the best things that you can buy each week at the store. So in today's video, we're going to cover why do corn tortillas get crumbly and dry in the first place. We'll talk about the best ways to reheat them, the different types of corn tortillas you can find at the store. And most importantly, I'm going to show you some recipes and a framework that explain how to use corn tortillas when they are fresh, dry, or stale. So you'll no longer look at that leftover stack with disdain, but instead as a source of creative weeknight dinners. So let's break it down. When it comes to thinking about what you can make with corn tortillas, I like to put them into three buckets. One, fresh, kind of the one to two day range. Secondly, firm, kind of the two to four day range. And lastly, stale, which after four or five days, they're definitely going to be pretty stale. Now, these are not hard and fast rules. Any of the dishes you can make in two or three, you can make with fresh tortillas. But the reason I put them into these categories is after answering this question. And that is, why do corn tortillas get stiff and crumbly in the first place? I assumed it was just due to moisture loss. But as noted in On Food and Cooking, in the landmark study of bread staling in 1852, the Frenchman Jean-Baptiste Balzignant showed that bread could be hermetically sealed to prevent it from losing any water, and yet it still went stale. Now, he further showed that staling can be reversed by reheating bread to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 C, and this is the temperature we now know that wheat starch elates. And staling is now understood to be a manifestation of starch retrogradation, which is the recrystallization, water migration out of the granules and hardening that take place when a cooked starch is then cooled. So you're probably wondering, why does any of this matter? Well, starch retrogradation is the reason why corn tortillas get firm after a day or two and start to get stale. Traditional tortillas are made with just two ingredients, nixtamalized corn that is mixed with water. And this creates the masa that is formed into our corn tortillas. Now, instead of wheat starch, tortillas obviously have corn starch, which gelates between 144 and 162 degrees Fahrenheit. And at this temperature, the tortillas are their most pliable because the corn starch and water exist in this gelation state. But additionally, the aroma and flavor will be more present at these higher temperatures too. And still warm, fresh made morning tortillas in Mexico City are one of my all time favorite things in the world. But even as those cool down to room temperature, the corn starch retrogrades so the tortillas firm up. Now, you may be wondering, if that's true, then why are some of the corn tortillas I buy at the grocery store still nice and pliable even at room temperature? Well, any tortillas that are soft and pliable at the grocery store almost assuredly have a list of preservatives and other ingredients added to them to help maintain that pliable texture. And this could be things like cellulose gum, propanoic acid, benzoic acid, or phosphoric acid. And it's really easy to see the textural difference of a tortilla at room temperature with preservative compared to those without. Now, whether you buy corn tortillas with or without preservatives, they still both benefit from reheating them, especially if you are making a taco. And if making a taco is our goal, we need to answer two questions. Firstly, what is the best way to reheat corn tortillas? And then secondly, what's the best way to keep them warm? Now answering this first question realistically needs to be its own video because what do I even mean by best? For example, if I need to heat 20 or 30 tortillas, I'm just gonna throw that stack in the microwave even if heating them over a gas flame may taste better or a tortilla without preservatives that is quite stiff might benefit from some water added while a tortilla with preservatives might stick and burn if I try adding water before heating it. So let me give you the basics of reheating by showing you three different tortillas with three different reheating methods. And our goal, regardless of the specific technique that you choose, is to heat the tortilla to that 144 to 160 degree range, which again is the temperature at which the corn starch gelates, meaning that the starch retrogradation is reversed, so the tortillas are pliable. 
And the first tortilla here was taken straight from the fridge to the plate, which is the number one cardinal shin you should be avoiding. It has no aroma and texturally it's super dry. The second tortilla was just warmed on a stack on the griddle and it is noticeably more pliable and has more corn flavor than that first tortilla that wasn't warmed at all. The third tortilla was warmed over a gas burner, which adds a nice, beautiful char on the exterior that really comes through while you're eating it. But you can see that this tortilla is a little bit drier than the second one because the high heat of the flame likely drove off more of the water than the slower steamed one. However, that charred flavor is definitely a nice touch. So there are a lot of factors at play here, such as the type of tortillas you have, the amount you are trying to warm up, whether you're serving them for two people or 20, but regardless, all you wanna do is make sure to get that tortilla into that heat range. And then secondly, if you're serving them for a large party, you definitely wanna know what is the best way to keep them warm. So we'll keep this one short. Keith on my team did some testing and found that by simply keeping them in foil, the tortillas had the longest staying power because that heat kind of steams inside there and doesn't escape like a towel would. And remember, our goal is to keep the tortillas as warm as long as possible to reverse that starch retrodegradation process as long as we can. Now, after all that, even a couple of days later, your tortillas are going to continue to retrograde and lose moisture, yielding crumbly and dry tortillas no matter what you do. So instead of trying to make taco with these, for the rest of this video, I wanna show you some options to lean into the fact that these are drying out and getting stale because you can make a whole host of delicious weeknight dinners. First, let's explore three taco adjacent options. The first and quickest, a quesadilla. You just add meat and cheese, maybe a little oil to the edge so you can crisp them up. And this is what I'll be showing you in a recipe shortly. And you need to try the beef for this recipe. Before I get there though, there are two other amazing options that are tacos dorados and enchiladas. And there can be slight variations with how both of these are made, but typically for tacos dorados, you fill a corn tortilla, just like you would for a taco, except they are then shallow fried in a pan on both sides to create a hard shell around the exterior. These can then be dipped and eaten or topped with crema and salad. Then lastly, one of my all-time favorite dishes, enchiladas, are a great option for this category for day or two old tortillas. The tortillas are slathered in a sauce and then filled and topped with as you please, and it's meant to be a little messy and eaten with a fork anyway, so those tortillas that are getting stale and dry should hold up quite well to the sauce. But now, let me show you how to make a delicious quesadilla with freezer meat and a dry tortilla. To start, let's prep the meat. I took a portion of frozen braised beef and placed it in a pan over medium heat to let that start to melt and crisp. And this braised beef was from my Why I Cook Meat Straight from the Freezer video, which I would highly recommend checking out. Once it started to warm up and that fat has melt, let's season it. So for this, I added a spoonful of tomato paste, about five grams of beef bouillon, a squirt of hot sauce, and a sprinkle of cumin seed, and then mixed all of that together. Then I added a little water to give it kind of a saucy feel, but all you have to do is let this cook down for another two to three minutes. And lastly, I gave it a sprinkle of smoked paprika, which I find really nice, but now you have this addictive smoky cumin sauce braised beef filling that is amazing for a quesadilla. So to make that, I slapped a corn tortilla down on the griddle and spritzed it with a little bit of oil. I let both sides warm up for 20 seconds, then added half of the grated Monterey Jack to one side, followed with a portion of the beef, and then lastly, the other half of the cheese on top. And I like splitting up the cheese like this so it kind of melts into a gooey blanket around that beef and then just let the quesadilla cook for three to four minutes. And during this time, I like to really get a nice crisp on the exterior and that beef and cheese on the inside is gonna add moisture which steams the interior giving a soft inside along with a crunchy exterior. Once I pulled it off, I served this with a little cilantro lime sour cream and let's dive in. Let's see what the texture is like on this bad boy. Mm. I could have easily crushed two or three more of these. I made one just because I still have more to cook today, so I'm trying to pace myself a little bit. But this, I love it because I've never made this specific pairing before, but the beef from the freezer paired with like the crispy tortilla on the exterior, but it's still got a little bit of chew in there, which I think is really nice for kind of a, a corn tortilla quesadilla. Pair it with a little sour cream with some lime 
juice and zest and cilantro, I mean, that is an absolutely killer recipe. So this recipe will be up on the website specifically, but really again, think about this category. And lastly, let's move on to category three, which is what to do with your corn tortillas when they're basically completely dried out and stale. After four or five days and beyond, depending on the type of tortillas you have, they're gonna be very stale and dry, and they probably can't even fold in half for a quesadilla without breaking. So in this case, it's time to remove all the moisture from the tortillas, and we're gonna do that through frying. Or if you want a low calorie option, the air fryer works well too. Then you have one decision to make, and that is what form factor of tortilla do you want? And here are my top four favorites. One, the tostada, two, tortilla chips, three, tortilla strips, and lastly, taquitos. And these are all basically fried exactly the same, other than the taquitos you would fill with something before you fry them. To start, set a wok over medium-high heat and add about an inch or two of peanut oil and bring that to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, while the oil is heating up, take the tortillas and then you can either cut them into chips, the strips, or for the tostadas, just leave them as is. Once the oil is hot, add them in and fry until crisp, and this should only take a couple of minutes. And the bubbling here is the water escaping from the tortillas, which for stale tortillas, the waiting around has actually done some of that work for us. Once the tortillas are golden brown, add them to a baking sheet over a wire rack, along with a little sprinkle of salt. And again, you have so many options of what you can do with these. The tostada is great for topping with anything. On my channel, some of my top candidates would be tinga tostada and huevos rancheros, or you could take the beef we use for recipe number two and top it with as you please. Tortilla chips can obviously be used for dipping with anything, but are also great for another one of my all-time favorite dishes, chilaquiles. Then lastly, I love having these tortilla strips on hand. This is a classic shape for tortilla soup, but you could add seasonings to these right out of the fryer to make kind of homemade Fritos, or what I did is make a really quick chicken salad. So for this, I added some lettuce to a bowl, followed by chopped tomatoes and the tortilla strips. Next, I came in with some chopped grilled chicken breast, and on top of that goes some avocado, and then I had a lime cilantro onion from the carnitas taco earlier, and some cheese and a spicy vinaigrette. You just mix all of that up, and the tortillas give it an amazing crunch and corn flavor that pairs so well. So all of the old recipes and new recipes mentioned will all be linked down below if you wanna give them a shot. But keep in mind this corn tortilla framework. Leftover corn tortillas are one of the best things to have around to help you use up leftover proteins or vegetables. Whether it's tacos, quesadillas, enchiladas, chips, or tostadas, the humble corn tortilla is one of the most versatile ingredients you can add to your grocery list. But anyway, that will wrap it up for me. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.